This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. And we're back again. And we're here on Thanksgiving Eve, so I guess we'll all be going home to peel potatoes <laughs> and and uh, um, thaw turkeys <laughs> and you know all those um, wonderful Thanksgiving traditions that we have. You know the Norman Rockwell. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what our. Yeah. Th how about you, Frank? That's yeah. what our Thanksgiving yeah, looks yeah. like. How about you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, our Thanksgiving now, since we're getting older and our children are getting older, I mean, we still do the turkey. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll do the turkey. And then they do everything else, and then we gather and, and uh, stuff ourselves. When her so. husband died suddenly in 1822, Sarah Josepha Hale found herself and her five children in dire need of a steady income. Friends backed the anonymous publication of a collection of her poetry, and she began to submit stories and poems to literary magazines. Sarah quickly gained the attention and respect of editors of the leading periodicals. Though a prolific writer, she is most remembered for Mary Had a Little Lamb. Asked by a Boston publishing firm to edit the first American magazine written for women, Sarah moved her family from New Hampshire to Boston in 1828. She applied scrupulous editorial standards to the ladies' magazine, accepting only original material and soliciting female writers. When Louis Godey purchased the magazine, she became the editor of Godey's Ladies' Book. She moved to Philadelphia and made Godey's the leading American women's literary and fashion periodical for the following four decades. Though not a supporter of women's suffrage because of the corrupting nature of politics, she consistently advocated education, exercise, property rights, and sensible fashion for women. She ardently lobbied to have Thanksgiving recognized as a national holiday. It had been regularly celebrated by different parts of the country, but not uniformly. During the Civil War, Sarah wrote to President Abraham Lincoln, and he delivered. In October 1863, Lincoln declared, I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States, and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands, to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November next as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. Sarah passed away at the age of 89 and her body rests in Philadelphia's Laurel Hill Cemetery. She is certainly not forgotten and Carol Lieberman of the Union League Civil War Roundtable portrays Sarah at numerous events including the recent unveiling of an historical marker in her honor. As you sit down to your turkey dinner, sing a round of Mary Had a Little Lamb and toast the remarkable widow, Sarah Josepha Hale. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I'm Deb. I'm Frank. And we'll see you somewhere around, around Kansas. Kansas. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream.